In this video, I want to introduce another way that you can input information from the keyboard. And that technique is going to be to use this uh, built-in function called get, G-E-T, which you can see here. And we will compare get with now our very familiar input device called CN. Um, this program already has quite a bit of information, as you can see. And I'm going to fill in a few of the blank spaces to illustrate get and illustrate CN and then uh, compare them. Uh, there are uh, four cases that are spelled out. You see case one, case two, and so on. And there's just some C out messages that print some information to the screen. And you know how to use C out already. And these are just messages. So this is a prompt indicating that we should type in four characters with no spaces. And then after we put some code in here, then we will output to the screen what we entered. Uh, I have declared four character variables. You can see them here called CH1, CH2, 3, and 4. And I've initialized each one of them to a blank. So that's a single quote with a blank and a single quote. I've also declared a string variable that's called remainder. And you'll see how that works as we do each of these cases. Now, let's do case number one. In this case, we want to use CN. And we want to read in a series of characters with no spaces between them. How do you do that with CN? We want to use these variables, you know, CH1, 2, 3, and 4. So that's where we will store the uh, characters that we read in. And let's write a CN statement right here that will do that. So it's just, you know, CN, very easy. We just list CH1, CH2, and so on. CH3 and CH4 than a semicolon. So there's nothing different about the way we use CN than what you've seen already. This will read in four characters and then we will print those back out to the screen. And with this C out statement, you'll see that uh, there's no spaces, there's no formatting. So these will all come out um, together one character at a time. Then, and I'll demonstrate this when I run the example, if there happen to be any additional characters uh, that I type in, this CN statement reads four, but if I had typed in more than that, then there would be a few remaining in what we call the input buffer. So getLine would read those additional characters, and then it would print them out here in the, this variable called remainder. Uh, since I'm using Windows, I'm going to insert a system pause right here so that we can see the result of case one and not get all the extra stuff from the other cases. So I'm going to insert a system pause right here. And remember, this is only a, a Windows uh, operating system call. If you're using something else, this will not work. Now, uh, now that we have this, let's compile the program and let's run it. Here we have the output screen now that the program is running. And you see the prompt, enter at least four characters with no spaces in between. Fine. Let's do that. And I'll just type in some uppercase letters like A, B, C, D. There's no space between them. So when I hit the Enter key, then we get the results of case one, which just says that you entered A, B, C, and D. Now, the thing that's important to notice here is that there is no space between those four letters. So when I type them in, this CN statement is able to read them and it, we didn't have to have spaces between them for CN, for CN to read the characters. And that's because each one of those variables, CH1, 2, 3, and 4, those are specifically just one character each. It cannot be more, cannot be less. So if you have a character variable, it contains just one character. So CN reads them one at a time, A, B, C, and D, from left to right, and then we just print those back to the screen. Now I'm going to run the program again, and I'm going to type in a few extra characters. Here we go, the program's running, and I'll type in more than four characters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now, uh, the CN statement here is going to read in exactly four characters, the A, B, C, and D, and it will print those back out. Then the remaining information, getLine will do that. So recall from a previous video that getLine reads everything up until it encounters an end of line key or an end of line character that's produced by the inner key. Okay, so here we go. Here's the output. There are several letters. I'll hit enter. And we print out 
CH1, 2, 3, and 4 as we did before, but this time because I entered the extra information that was still remaining in the input buffer after the CN statement, so that extra information was read by getLine and then it was printed to the screen. So you can see now that the remainder of the input was EF and G. So that's what's going on there. The thing about the input buffer is you can type as much information as you want into the input buffer. And when you're typing on the keyboard, you type a certain amount of information, then you hit enter. All of that goes into the input buffer. That input buffer then must match with the input statements of your program, or that is the data in the input buffer. You must have the a matching amount of input uh, commands, CN, or whatever it might be, uh, CN and get line, in order to read in all the data in the input buffer. Okay, we'll, we'll see some more about the input buffer in future lessons. For now, we want to do the uh, case number two. So I'm just going to take the uh, system pause, I'm going to cut it from here, and I'll paste it after uh, case number two. And in case number two, it's almost identical. We are just going to enter some data with spaces in between them this time. So in case number one, there were no spaces. Case number two, we will put spaces in between. The input looks exactly the same. We can use the CN statement. It will copy it. We'll paste it right here. And then we will input the information using the CN statement. We'll type spaces in between, and then we'll have the same output. So we have that, and if there's any remainder, get line will take care of that, and it will print it out. Then we'll stop before we get to case number three. All right, well, let's go ahead and compile and run the program and see what we get. Uh, the program is running. Uh, this is case number one, so I have to get past it. So A, B, C, D. I click on the window A, B, C, D. Now it's active. So this is case number one. We'll move past it. So now we're at case number two, and the prompt says to enter the uh, information with spaces. So let's do that. So let's put some spaces in between our input. So A space B, and it doesn't matter how many spaces, I'll put a lot between them here, A, B, C, and some more spaces, and D. Okay, how will C and treat this? If I hit enter, then you'll see the output just says I entered A, B, C, and D. Let's move this down a little bit so we can see what the input looks like. And there's nothing different, okay? C, N, if you're reading in data with spaces in between, you can use the same input statement as you did to have the data all come uh, pressed together with no spaces. See, if you have spaces in between, like the space between A and B, or all of these spaces between B and C, CN cannot read those. It ignores them. CN cannot read a space, and that's one thing you need to remember. CN cannot read a space, and let's extend that. CN doesn't recognize tabs. It doesn't rec recognize end-of-line characters. Anything that's white space, CN will skip over that until it finds something that isn't white space, and then it reads that in as data. Okay, now let's suppose we have information that we want to type in, but we want to actually capture the spaces. You've seen in a previous video we could use getLine to do that, but getLine would read in everything until it sees the end of line character. So I'm going to introduce a new feature of C++ for input, and that's called get, cn.get. So let's look at that next. Okay, to look at the get, we will use cases number three and four to look at how get works. I'm going to just, again, cut the system pause and move it down to the end of case number three. Here is how we use get. The uh, get function attaches itself to cn after a dot. Okay, so we are going to use this get feature by using cn.get, and we'll do the same two cases we just did. In case number three, we'll enter characters with no spaces, and in uh, case number four, we will enter four characters with spaces in between. So let's see how get differs from the regular cn. In order to input data with cn.get, we have to type in the function. Then in parentheses, you have to specify something that's a character variable. So ch1 is what we'll use to read in the first character. Then you close that with a semicolon. And let's just put a comment here. Um, the get function allows you to read in any character at all. So get will read in a space. It'll read in a tab. It'll read in an end of line character. So uh, other than or different than just cn, get allows you to read in white space. So let's put that here. So the get will read exactly one character 
from the input buffer. Okay. Mm. Including spaces. All right, so this will read a space. It also reads only one character. So if I want to read in four, I need to repeat that um, three more times. So I'll just make a copy and I will paste that in and do a little editing. So one more, one more. Then we need to change the variables so that we can read in all of them. So let's just change the CH1 to CH2 there, CH3 here, and CH4 there. So this reads in four characters. Then we'll print them back out using the same format, the Cout statement. So they will be printed out all together. So let's compile and run the program and let's see how this get, pro this get function works. Well, I'm running the program and I'm going to go ahead and move down to case number three. So let's type in those uh, four characters with no spaces. So A, B, C, and D again. Then I'll hit enter. The output says case three, you entered A, B, C, and D. So that looks the same as case number one. All the data are compressed. The uh, cn.get reads one character at a time. Okay, so the A goes into CH1, B goes to CH2, and so on. Now, that's how that works. Let's go ahead and finish this program up by looking at the uh, last case, case number four. In case number four, we are supposed to enter characters with spaces in between. We're still going to use get, so I'm going to just uh, remove the system pause altogether since we'll be at the end of the program after this, this example. And we can reuse the get commands from up here. Because I just want to show you, I mean, the input's still going to be using get, but we'll have spaces in between. So let's see what happens there. So I'll make a, make a copy of those four lines, and then we'll drop them in here. So now we're in uh, case number four. We'll use get, but this time we will type some spaces into the input. Now, uh, let's go ahead and compile and run the program. The program is running, and I've already entered the data for cases one, two, and three. So now we're down here, and we can enter the uh, data for case number four. So this time we want to put spaces in between. I will put exactly one space between the input. Okay, A space, B space, C space, and D. And then I'll hit enter. Then look at the output. Okay, I typed in those with spaces in between, but this time the output says you entered A, B. Well, gee, what happened to the other two? What happened to C and D? Well, you can see that um, they are picked up by the get line, and they are output here. But let's look, let's look carefully then at what's happening. When I typed in the A, the CN get for CH1, that read the letter A and stored it in CH1. Then when I typed in a space, then get read that as CH2. So CH2 then is read in as a blank because cn.get reads blanks. Then as we move further along, the B is read and that's stored as CH3 in our program. And then finally the CH4, that's going to read the blank after we have the, the letter B. Okay, so that's CH1, CH2, CH3, that blank is uh, CH4. And that left us with a C, a blank, and a D in the input buffer and get line read that and it output it here. So this illustrates clearly that the cn.get can read and store blanks from the input buffer. So if you need to read in information that contains blanks or even a tab or even an end line, then you can read that general information called white space. You can read it with get. So we'll see some additional features of get in future videos, but this gives you another um, another option for your input where you can read in spaces if you want to. Now, the thing about CN is, you know, if you need to read in a string or something, it can read in a string uh, instead of just a single character, and you know that you can also read in any type of data you want with CN. In the case of get, however, these things here, those have to be just a single character variable type. So you cannot read in numbers and you can't read in strings with get but you can read in one character at a time, regardless of what that character is. So that's it. That compares cn.get with cn, and we'll continue in the future to, to look at some other uses of cn.get and see how it plays well with just ordinary cn and get line.
So I think that's enough for this video. So let's call it quits right here.